Hi and welcome to volume of prisms and cylinders. Just before we start, a quick reminder that there is a notes chart available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So I just want to start this video with a little diagram that used to be provided at the front of um, all GCSE maths exams. Um, it's not uh, no longer there, it's something you now need to learn and remember. And that is the definition, uh, sorry, the formula for the volume of a prism. And that is that the area of a cross section times the length. Now, what does it mean by the cross section? Well, basically a prism is a shape which has the same shape all the way throughout uh, its, uh, its length. And so if you slice the shape, um, at any point you would re uh, receive exactly the same shape here if I did it again here this will be the same shape all the way through its length if I sliced it um, at any point and so we have the area of the cross section times length gives us the volume of that prism so can we use that in order to find the volume of this prism this is a triangular prism uh, we have a um, a triangle as its cross section again if i was to slice it in this direction it would still have that triangle as its front face um, but all i'm going to do is i'm going to think about what we've just been told so the volume is the area of the cross section well the cross section is the triangle and so the area of this triangle is going to be a half times the base times the height so a half times four times three so that is six centimeters squared that is the area of the cross section but i want the volume and so the volume then comes from the area of the cross section multiplied by its length so in this case six six times six equals 36 centimeters cubed how about this one now this one doesn't have a specific name it's uh, sometimes known as an l uh, an l-shaped prism and that is just because we've got an l shape as its cross section now if i were to try to find the area of the cross section i would need to think about how that l shape has been formed and so i would draw myself a little sketch i've got six centimeters here i've got seven centimeters along the bottom but what i'm actually going to do is I'm going to split because this is a compound shape so I'm going to break it down into smaller pieces and so this length here is actually three which tells me that at the bottom it, as the bottom was entirely seven centimeters if I've already used three well then the remaining piece must be four and if I have a look at this diagram the height of that piece is also four so if I wanted to get the area of this shape I would need to do six times three for the first piece and I would also need to do four times four for the second piece. Well, that is 18 plus 16. And so the area there is 34 centimeters squared. Now that is the area of the cross section. We've done that, but to get the volume, I'm going to need to multiply it by its length. And so I'm going to have to have 34 multiplied by 11. Now, depending on how you want to do this, um, you may want to use a grid. So that will be 300, that will be 40, this will be 30, and this will be 4. And so add all of those together, 340, 34 added, gives me 374 centimetres cubed. We found the volume of that shape next we have a cylinder now cylinders uh, technically are not prisms um, a prism uh, technically should have a polygon as its cross section um, and a polygon only has straight sides so a cylinder technically isn't um, a prism but it does follow the same rule we still need the area of the cross section multiplied by its length and so in this case the cross section is a circle and so the circle um, has a radius of four centimeters and so if i want to find the area of that circle well i need to use the formula for the area of a circle which is pi times radius squared so four times uh, sorry pi times four squared if you type pi times four squared into a calculator um, well it would actually just come up saying 16 pi that's how i'm going to leave it to start with because it's 16 pi is the area um, of the cross section but if I want to get the volume 
I need to multiply it by its length. And so I'm actually going to do 16 pi times 8 in order to get uh, the final answer. And so I'll just type that into a calculator, 16 uh, times pi times 8, and it is 128 pi. But generally we want to give this as a decimal, and so that comes to 402.1238597, and usually we'd want to give that as a rounded version, let's say two decimal places, and so this will be 402.12 centimetres cubed. It's still exactly the same process, area of the cross section first, but then multiply by the length. And so next we have a, a tin of Heinz beans, um, and we've got um, all of the dimensions of that tin of beans. It is um, a height of 11 centimetres, and then we have a seven and a half centimetres, but in this case, what is the seven and a half centimetres representing? Well, if I draw the cross section, which is what the lid of the tin is, we've been given that it's 7.5 centimetres across. Now, in terms of finding the area, that is not actually what we want. What we want is the radius. And so we're going to have to half that at 3.75. And so to get the area of the cross section, I would need to do pi times 3.75 squared and at this stage I'm actually going to leave it exactly as that uh, because that's actually a little bit easier for me to type in uh, than finding the full answer because if I want to get the volume well I'm going to have to multiply the area of the cross section which was pi times 3.75 squared by the length which in this case is 11 and if I type all of that into the calculator, I get pi times 3.75 squared times 11. I get 2475 over 16 pi. Not a particularly nice answer there, so let's change it into a decimal. Well, that comes to 485.97 to two decimal places centimetres cubed. And um, we're going to end with a couple of questions where we've already been told the volume and we're asked to find one of the dimensions of the shape. And the reason for that is that uh, basically this is a uh, situation where we need to work backwards, almost solving an equation in order to find the answer. Um, and so if we think about this shape, the cross section is this triangle. Now, how do you get the area of a triangle? Well, that would be a half times the base, which is three times the height. Um, will be the area of the cross section. But then that has been multiplied by 8 in order to get the volume. And we've been told what the volume is. We've been told that the volume is 72. And therefore, this first section is the area of the cross section. This is the length and this is the volume. And so all I want to do is just try to solve this equation to get h all on its own. So the first thing I'm actually going to do here is a half times 3 times 8. Um, so that is uh, 3 times 8 is 24, times a half is 12. So 12 times the height equals 72. So how do I get the height on its own? Well, I'm going to have to divide by 12. If I divide by 12 on both sides, it will tell me what the height is. 72 divided by 12 is 6. And so the height is 6 centimeters. Let's try it with a, um, with a cylinder. So in this case I'm trying to find out what the radius of this cylinder is um, and we've been told here that the volume is 502.65 centimeters cubed. Well in terms of finding the radius the first thing I need to think about is how did I find the area of the cross section? Well the area of the cross section was pi times r squared and r is all that we know here, so pi times r squared, and therefore to turn it into the volume, I've multiplied it by 10. And that has given me 502.65. Now, I need to find r all on its own. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And if I do that, I get pi times r squared 
equals 50.265 and then I'm going to divide by pi. If I divide by pi and if I just type that into a calculator 50.265 divided by pi well I get that r squared equals 15.9998464 how would I get r all on its own? Well, this is r squared, so I need to take the square root of that. So I'm going to square root both sides, and the square root of 15.999 is 3.9999804. For all intents and purposes, r is 4 centimetres. And so we end with the exam question and this came from the Edexcel mock papers and it was on both the foundation and higher paper one. Uh, we have a diagram of a swimming pool and the swimming pool is in the shape of a prism. The swimming pool is filled with water at a rate of 5 litres per second. Jeremy has 10 hours to fill the swimming pool. 1 metre cubed equals 1000 litres. Will he completely fill the swimming pool in 10 hours? You must show all your working. Well. This question is about volume because we want to know what um, what volume of water would fill this entire shape. And so we need to think about finding the volume of that uh, prism. And in this case, we need to think about the fact that this is a compound shape. What we've got is a rectangle and a triangle. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just find the area of the rectangular piece. And that is 1 meter by 15 meters. And therefore, this is 15 meters squared. The triangle, we need to do a little bit more thinking about. Um, in this case, we know that the entire length is 15, but we've used 10. And therefore, this is 5 meters left over. In terms of the height, we know that the entire length was 3, but we've already used 1. And so that gives me 2 as the height. Now, if I were to think about the area of this triangle, well, that would be half times base times height. A half times 5 times 2, well, that actually just equals 5. And so it's 5 metres squared. How would I find the volume of the shape? Well, the volume of the shape would be the area of the cross section, which is these two added together, so that is 20 metres squared multiplied by the length. And in this case, the length is 10. And so the volume is 200 metres cubed. Now, that is only actually the first stage of this working out. What we've done is found out how many uh, metres cubed do we need. The next part is that we need to know how many litres we are dealing with. So 200 meters cubed, if we want to turn that into liters, we need to multiply by 1000. And so 200 meters cubed equals 200,000 liters. Next, if we think about the rate that it is being filled, five liters per second. So how many seconds is this going to take in order to fill well, what we're going to have to do, sorry about that, we're going to have to do 200,000 divided by 5. And so, let's place that into a little bus stop. So, 5 goes into 2, 0 times, goes into 20, 4 times, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, that is 40,000 seconds. Now, the last uh, part of this, that is how long it is actually going to take. But we were told that he had 10 hours to fill it. So the last thing is we need to compare this to what 10 hours actually is in seconds. And so 10 hours. Well, if there are 60 minutes in an hour, that means we have 600 minutes. If there are 60 seconds in a minute, then we need to times this by 60. And so we get 36, 0, 0, 0. So we have 36,000 seconds available. 
So, is this uh, swimming pool going to be filled in uh, 10 hours? Well, 10 hours is 36,000 seconds. It's going to take 40,000 seconds to complete. So, we cannot fill in 10 hours.